Broadcasting from Boston, Massachusetts, you're listening to the Technology Equals Equality Podcast. Hey, welcome back to the Technology Equals Equality Podcast. I'm your host, Lori Brooks, and this is episode 57. I am super pleased to welcome to the show Jen Leno. Jen is a social media marketing strategist. She began her career in nonprofit, which taught her how to be resourceful in her marketing. She was the first in her crowd to get email, sell on eBay, and find a husband on America Online. Jen has always been fascinated by technology and the power it holds to allow us to take control of our destiny and connect us. After launching a local marketing firm to help businesses learn how to use digital tools to grow their businesses, Jen saw that the demand for this training was even larger than she anticipated. She created JenLeonard.com and now sells online courses that teach entrepreneurs how to use social media and digital tools to grow their businesses. She is also a new course author with Linda, a LinkedIn company and founder of The Front Row, a free online classroom for entrepreneurs. Thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited to have you on. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. Awesome. Tell us a story of how it is you once saw the future before you began branding yourself, before you began, you know, building out the business and using tech from the road to create that opportunity for yourself. Long before then, when you were traveling as a kid, what was it that you were thinking the future would look like? I was going to be the next Laura Ingalls Wilder. And I mean, if I'm going to go back that far, I mean, I just, I, I, I thought I looked like Laura Ingalls Wilde and she got to ride a horse bareback across the country um, to school and park her horse outside of school. And I thought that's so cool. And I, I remember I wrote a letter to the show and I, with a picture of myself and I was like, you know, if she ever gets sick, I can be her fill in. I never, ever really had a picture of the future for myself. I've always been a very in the moment kind of a person and uh, say yes to every opportunity and uh, never wanting to miss out on anything. So I let life sort of lead me along that way uh, and have been pretty lucky in the, in the way that went for me. I mean, it could have gone so badly, I think maybe even with the people I dated, thank goodness this one or that one didn't ask me to marry him. I might've said yes. So I ended up sort of that, that's sort of how I took everything, even in, When I went to university, I decided on a liberal arts degree because I I just felt like uh, there was so much I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn about everything. So I had a really, um, when when it got time towards graduation, I had a really hard time because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And I I majored in sociology not because I thought I wanted to be a sociologist, but because I just found it so interesting. Right. And, um, just sort of, you know, and then I thought, well, the next logical thing is to do an internship at, as a social worker, and I realized I didn't want to do that. <clears throat> but now when I look back, it was really obvious that I was always a marketer. Um, I'm very outgoing, and I'm very interested. I've always been interested in brands in general and the messages they put out to the world. I mean, all the way back to Tony the Tiger and um, – you know, Ronald McDonald and and all that stuff that I grew up with, I remember thinking about the way they would say on the commercial, this is part of a complete breakfast. You know, I remember thinking, hmm, I somehow don't think they're telling us all, you know, the whole story. And uh, and always thinking about those branding messages. So when I graduated uh, from university and I started doing temp jobs and, um, uh, to try to figure out what my next real job was going to be or what my first real job was going to be, I got a temp job at a um, nonprofit. And the guy said to me, well, um, you're probably not going to get many people say yes because it was a cold call thing. Like I had to get on the uh, phone, not ask for donations, but ask for people to participate in this fundraiser they had. And he said, you're probably not going to get anybody. And I thought, um, Oh, okay, well, it's on, buddy, you know, because <laughs> he told me, you know, you're going to fail. So I thought, well, I'll show him. So I, I was at actually pretty good at this. And so, I, you know, I made cold calls all day for like two months. And, um, and, I, and I blew all these records out of the water. And then they offered me a full-time position uh, making $19,000 a year. This is in 1998. 
like 1992 or something. <laughs> and, um, and I had a, um, you know, I got my own office with a little thing on my desk that had my name and my title program coordinator. And I really was psyched. I was so psyched. And, uh, and the, the truth is that that job actually turned into a very good job and I got promoted through the ranks and, um, and I loved it. And the thing is, Although it was nonprofit, it was all about marketing. It was, and, and not only that, it, I learned everything about marketing and how to be like truly resourceful. Because if you have a shoestring budget, you really have to learn, you know, how to be resourceful. And uh, and it was awesome. And then I became a stay-at-home mom, um, like seven years into that. And uh, yeah. So, but so so to answer your question, the very like long way to get to 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 the answer of your question <laughs> is that. Um, I never did see my future. I just, I just sort of let things unfold and, you know, and it turned out all right because now where I am is the perfect, perfect place. That's awesome. Basically, you were just living life. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. That's what I should have just said. I was just living life. And I love it because, you know, I fell into the journey very, in a very similar fashion. You know, I was working, I was living life, I was doing what I was doing. And then I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And I think that's a really important piece for a lot of people to hear. And that's kind of where that question is coming from, Jen, is because there are entrepreneurs, people who are looking at the entrepreneurial journey as though it's something that, oh, they must have been planning this for years or, oh, this is what someone was dreaming of doing their entire life and they spent their entire life planning it out and saving for it and so forth. And And that's not realistically how it happens. You know, a good portion of my clients are people who fell into the journey of, you know, entrepreneurship in some way, shape or form. Um, So I love that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, no, I think that the people that knew what they wanted to do and they saw it from the very beginning are the like, I don't know. They're the they're the doctors and the surgeons and and so forth, you know. Or uh, I don't know. I rarely see entrepreneurs or meet entrepreneurs like you said who saw it so clearly from the beginning. What did you think were some of the first steps that you took once you did begin recognizing? You know, okay, so now you're a stay at home mom. You've got this marketing experience. Um, you know what you're good at. You know your strengths. Uh, you know what you enjoy. How did you begin? putting all of that together to form your journey or to begin your journey? You know, there were a lot of little steps and I think the, the exploration part was the funnest thing. And and I named my business, um, the Posner Laner group, LLC Posner being my maiden name. Um, Mm -hmm. It was my husband's idea. It sort of sounded like it was already established, I guess, like there was more than one of me Uh, right? (laughs) and that it gave room for growth. And and it's such a boring name, but it was like, I just didn't know what it was going to be. But, but I, um, became an LLC right off the bat and then just started throwing stuff against the wall. But here's the thing. And this, this is, is so simple, but it's something I would recommend to, to anyone and everyone who is really thinking about, you know, going down this road of entrepreneurship. And that is um, in my particular case, still not knowing exactly how this was going to shake out and having been home for all these years, 13 years uh, as a stay at home mom, when I decided to do this, but always very, like I stayed on top of all the latest digital stuff. So I was very current in my, in my knowledge. Um, but I decided to, what I did was I identified a local business that was a good business, but didn't have any kind of like social media presence. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't even have a website as I recall, but they were a good business. Um, you know, I liked I liked I liked the stuff that she sold. I liked I liked her. Um, so I went into this to this small business and I said, look, I, what I'd like to do is take control of your marketing and I'm not going to charge you one penny. But in return, what I'll ask for you from you is basically your trust and complete control. Um, like I want to be able to do this really without much input on your part. And, and I want the freedom to be able to do that. And then at the end, I, um, if you're happy, I want you to give a great testimonial for me. And that was it. Because I knew if I did that, I could build out a portfolio um, that, that was pretty robust, even though it was only one company, right? Because there's so many facets to marketing. So I could exhibit the web page that I designed. I could show their Facebook advertising campaign. I could show their Twitter campaign. I could show their tagline, their branding. Um, 
I could show the results, you know, that from the measurements of all that, you know, and, and then I could sit with her and look at her sales and show that there was an increase. So it was, it was really the perfect thing I could have done because what I didn't anticipate was after that, not only did I get some much needed, like real experience, real life experience, um, it was very successful. And consequently, there were a t- there's a lot of businesses up and down the street from this person. So when they have association meetings, and she went in and she just raved about me. And before I knew it, my uh, calendar was completely full. In fact, after that moment, I really never had to market my services, um, my consulting services ever again. Um, and I was completely, pa- I was backlogged. Um, <laughs> and so it was so cool. And then I thought about it, you know, and Really, all I did was I took an apprenticeship and turned it upside down. So I went and said, you know, let let me do this. I, like I created an apprenticeship sort of, you know, and then if you think about it, like it just, it really makes, it just makes all the sense in the world. And so that was specific to marketing, but I can imagine, you know, a dozen other um, services that this uh, would work for and, um, yeah, so that was, that was the, those were some of the very first steps I took and it turned out to be like really the right move. I, I love the way you broke that down. What you did was you, you took a moment to realistically look at the market that you were looking to serve. You identified your center of influence, somebody who had other contacts and could, you know, get that word out there for you. You offered your services because you recognized that that person needed the assistance and then went ahead and asked for testimonials after providing that service, which went ahead and just pretty much kind of launched it for you. If, if I got that correctly, a hundred percent, that was perfect. And I, I kind of break it down in that way simply because I want those steps to be heard loud and clear. Jen, you did a great job of, of really showing the steps it takes to really kind of launch any sort of consulting business, you really need to get out there and make sure that your services are recognized and spoken for and, you know, that you have those people giving the testimonials because without those, it is so unbelievably difficult to, you know, begin filling the calendar in any way, shape or form. You know, the social media is what it is and it's outstanding in the marketing world, but word of mouth uh, you know, really is the base of, of starting many, many, many different things. Uh, Although I would say that, that there's something now that, you know, that wasn't available then that I do, that I do, I, I would say, I don't know, 99% of, of my, of my one-on-one clients, I recommend this to them. And that is live streaming, you know, has come into existence since, since I started, it's just brand new. And um, you can, if you if you have the kind of thing, well, actually, even if 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 you don't have something you can demonstrate, but you have a lot of knowledge, people are picking up their phones and it's completely free, and they're periscoping and broadcasting um, either a demonstration of them doing something if they're a maker or a creator or of some sort, um, or if they or if they have knowledge to share, they're just pressing a button and showing what they know. So where the testimonials are so important in the way that I I went about this, these days it's absolutely possible to, you know, ab- just press a button and, and share with the world and show the world that you're really good. Because, you know, we can create the prettiest business cards and the most beautiful websites. It, it means nothing um, if either someone else isn't going to vouch for the fact that you help them or, number two, you know, if you can show what you know. It's incredibly powerful. So I probably would have gone that route as well if it was available at that time. I love that. And I think what I'll actually do is throw a link in there to Periscope, um, you know, so that they can go ahead and check that out. Because live feeds are definitely something that's up and coming. And I think, as I mentioned to you before we began the interview, if I weren't so camera shy, I'd be doing live feeds myself because it is an outstanding way to connect. But Yeah, we got to get you over that quick. I I (laughs) <laughs> steps on my head <laughs> but Jen what do you feel like you learned that you didn't realize you were going to learn on this journey what did you what do you now know that you didn't know you were going to know what was that known for you um gosh so much so so much um 
okay, but I would say that the most game-changing thing I've learned that I, I wish that I would have known then uh, is that um, in this world that we live in, it's it's so easy to – um, oh, there's two things. Like one is more sort of ethereal and the other one is just more practical. So I'm going to start with the practical practical one, okay? Um, and that is in this world that we live in, it's so easy to outsource um, our, our busy work um, to very capable, affordable people locally and across the world, okay? Every tool we have sitting inside our PC or our Mac like allows us to do this. And I knew that. When I started, but I didn't realize what I what I wished I would have done is hired a virtual assistant before I ever thought that I needed one, which sounds really counterintuitive. But what I've learned recently, I, I took a course called the 90 day year that's um, instructed by a guy named Todd Herman. And if I didn't learn anything else in this in this online course, this one thing was so powerful to me. And he just said, you know, if you break down your tasks that you do every day on a daily basis on a daily basis into a, a dollar amount, right? Like, so you give yourself a scorecard mm-hmm. um, and, and and you're really honest with yourself about the value of that, then um, you're going to quickly see that you're hiding behind a lot of $10 an hour tasks. And that's because it's easy to fill up our schedules every day with $10 an hour tasks um, and feel at the end of the day that, wow, we really accomplished something. Like we checked off all those things on our to-do list. But if we spend our time, like a good portion of our time doing $100, $1,000, even $10,000 an hour tasks, uh, well, everything looks a lot um, different. But we all have the same little evil voices in our head that say, oh, it's just so much easier if I do it for myself. How am I even going to cheat someone? Where do I find someone? What, you know, what if I put all in that time and money into training them and then they leave, you know? But, um, but I found some really, um, really simple things that I put into play to, and I've done a few blog posts about this um, and some, some video tutorials about actually how you can hire someone and how to easily create like a training platform uh, for them. In fact, I record my screen now. Every little task that I do, I just click a button, record my screen. It gives me a little link, and I paste it onto this other little area. And I've created this whole onboarding platform now that if my amazing assistant is to leave, the next person that comes in, all I have to do is say, watch the videos, and they're going to they're gonna know exactly what it is that they need to do. So now, if I would have done this a year ago, two years ago, I really think I would have been so much farther ahead. But at the same time, the lessons I learned needed to be learned. But I, I would say um, that's the one thing. This other thing I want to tell you that, that's more uh, big big picture is that as it relates to being a mom, and that is um, just because you're home doesn't mean you're present. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I was sort of kidding myself for the whole first year that if I was still at home, if I was at home when the kids got off the bus at 3 o'clock, that it's still counted as sort of like me being an at-home mom or whatever, you know. But the the truth is um, I, w- I might as well have been, like they might as well have been really like on their own because they were either watching TV or doing their homework or whatever. But I certainly was not present because I was completely immersed in my laptop and getting stuff done, and it just felt very, very hard to turn it off. But I've learned how to manage that now, and it and that was a hard lesson learned because it really, you know, it took my son basically like pulling me aside in tears. He was like, he's 15 now, so he's 13 and a half or 14, and he was like, you know, you're just not any fun anymore, and I really need you, and you may think that I don't, but I, but I really do. And I was like, okay, message her. Wow, that is so so such a mirror image right now. Uh, my daughter is. 15 and we we definitely uh went through that very 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 similar situation where i had to learn that very same lesson um and i love the way you put that just because you're home doesn't mean you're present because it wasn't i was so immersed in in getting the business to where i wanted the business to be that it was very difficult and and that's funny that you said that because that is a difficult one to, to kind of wake up and see. Right. And, I mean, it's the ultimate. It's horrible. I mean, because, you know, yeah. she's going to be in college in three years, you know, yours and my boy, too. And it's just like 
you know, it's, it's, um, you don't want to look back and say, wow, you know, this, but, but at the same time, your business, like you, you just, it's, it's, it's so all consuming and we're so passionate about what we're building because we're really building something. It's, that's why it's so different than going into the nine to five because like you're, it's truly this thing that you're building. And so it's, it's very hard to pull away from it. But, um, some of the things I've, like, I, I, I've now set a Google, um, uh, autoresponder on Gmail. So if anybody emails me after three o'clock, they get an auto response that just says, thanks so much for your email. My office hours are 930 to three. I'll reply to your call in the next, your your email in the next business day. I mean, am I a hundred percent about that? No, but I'm I'm better. I'm a lot, I'm a lot better. I love that. (laughs) Auto responders are awesome. uh, If this, then that, it's another website that, yeah. Helps with, you know, auto responses to multiple different tasks, not just emails, but, you know, the ability to automate certain things and and be able to shut down and and carve out those hours to actually be present is extremely important when, you know, juggling a family in, in the process of building this business. And I think that's something that is kind of shied away from during this show. I don't think we've actually discussed that one before, Jen. So thank you very much for bringing that up because I think there are a lot of entrepreneurs and you know, or, you know, parents out there who are looking at an entrepreneurial journey as something uh, that they wouldn't be able to manage. But there are many ways to manage it. It's just a matter of focus and, and really making sure that you use the tools to assist you in doing so. Absolutely. And we have yeah. tools galore. Yes. Yes, we do. There's an app for everything. Literally. <laughs> Jen, what do you feel is the key to your success? Well, I don't know if I am a success, right? I mean, so let's start there. But um, uh, I personally would not have been able to um, build what I've built so far, and I'm still really um, only feel like I'm halfway there. But um, I wouldn't have gotten this far without the, you know, I have an amazing um, supportive husband, um, and uh, he really is my biggest cheerleader. And I think if I was having to uh, defend this or – try to explain why it was important to me, it would be really hard. I think, cause especially, you know, there are tough, there are tough days and there's, there's low moments. And if you don't have someone there to, to support you, whether it's a friend or, 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 or a family member, then I think it, it could be really easy to lose your momentum. Um, because, you know, this is a game, of, you know, it's so easy in life and in general. And I think, in entrepreneurship, especially, and especially online entrepreneurship, it is so easy to just click on the wrong place and see someone who's doing it better than you are and feel so inadequate. And sometimes that can be all it takes to just really sort of get you off your game for a day. You know, or maybe you had an idea and somebody else's, somebody else's, it's not that they stole it because there's very few original ideas, but it's someone else has, has already um, built it out and then started running with it. And you just sort of feel your heart, heart sink. So that's, I would say he's my, he's my secret weapon um, <laughs> because he really, he really, you know, when I have that horrible, you know, self-talk or, or whatever, I'll, I'll bounce it off of him and he'll, he'll set me straight, you know? Definitely. I think it's so extremely important to surround you with, surround yourself with those people who are going to be able to build you up, who are going to be able to keep you in that positive mindset and on the right track, you know, someone to bounce things off of them, whether that be a spouse or, you know, a, a best friend or even a mastermind group of some sort, um, you know, someone to assist in keeping yourself along that path and to, you know, hold you accountable, keep you uh, looking towards those goals can be extremely useful. And, and that's awesome. I love that he's such a cheerleader. <laughs> oh, and but but I also should point out he'll also tell me when he thinks something is like a, is 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 a loser. You know, like if it's if you, if I have a if I if I'm getting off the mark or you know if he does a thing, then I don't always agree with him. But you know, he it, it's it's honest feedback. So we all need someone who who gives us really honest feedback. Mm-hmm. No, definitely, definitely. I think um, feedback is is crucial to the journey you know I always try to stress that there's no such thing as failure there's only feedback you can only grow from something that you know you feel it didn't necessarily turn out or or turn into what you initially thought it was you just you're learning that isn't and and now you can figure out why um and move forward from there so right 
what I would love for you to do is, you know, tell us a little bit about Simplified Online Marketing, you know, and, and tell us a little bit about how it is that you help your clients. Um, well, so I believe so passionately that if we meet technology head on and, you know, and, and stop being afraid of technology and understand that it's really not as complicated as we make it out to be and just make up our minds to make friends with technology and learn technology that um, there's almost nothing we can't do. I mean, I always say like if I was shut in a if, if for some reason I was shut in, a, I mean, I would have to have Wi-Fi, but beyond that, if I was shut in a room with no windows, no access to the outside world, and all I have was like an iPad and a Wi-Fi signal, how much could happen just from that? I mean, I could learn several languages. I could, you know, I could build a business. I could communicate with anyone, anywhere. It's incredibly powerful. The tools we have at our fingertips are just no other generation of people has, has had what we have available to us. That passion led me to do the consulting I was telling you about, but but because also, you know, what I mentioned that I got booked out and then my calendar got so booked, is that the one-to-one -one coaching um, in person <clears throat> really wasn't working for me because I found that, so if I'm going to meet someone, I usually would meet people in coffee shops or whatever, Barnes & Noble, and that's where we would do our consulting sessions and we'd have our laptops. So I'd have to spend 30 minutes to get cute. And then I'd have to, you know, then you got to drive there. Then you have to park. I live in Cleveland, so we have terrible weather. Then you go in for the session. You chit-chat a little bit about how terrible the weather is. Then, um, you know, because you have to have a little bit of that ice breaking. So that's 15 minutes into the session, but you don't want to shortchange them. So you go an hour. You go the full hour, but now you're half past, you know, you're 15 minutes past. And then you got to chit-chat about the next meeting, schedule the next meeting. Then you drive home. On the way home, you realize you have to pick up your dry cleaning. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, it's like the kids are going to be off the school bus. So I try, and then it really, I would up my prices, up my prices. And then it just, it wasn't that I wasn't making um, a decent amount of money, I guess. It was just, it never felt uh, equitable in terms of the time that I was investing. Because, you know, then there was the stuff that I would do when I got home and after hours and research and you know, account, accounting and paperwork and, you know, so, um, so, and that was around the time I had that conversation with my son. I was like, something has to change. So I took it all online, 100%. I let all of my, um, my clients' uh, contracts, you know, we, we didn't renew and they all were very understanding. And, uh, and so I decided to build online courses. So then I could teach people these same powerful techniques, like how to use Facebook to grow your business, how to use Twitter to grow your business, um, how to use all these tools um, in a way that is easy to understand. That, that's my mission. And, and, um, and so my first course was called Social Media Summer Camp with Jen, which uh, I'm going to launch again in the, in the spring. And that's like a one-stop shop, comprehensive, like everything, like you learn how to use all of it. Um, then my second course was called Bird Nerds, which is all bird nerds, like like, you know, N-E-R-D. And, um, and that's all about Twitter, a comprehensive course about Twitter. And then I started missing the one-on-one -on -one a little bit. So that was, um, that's currently, the, that's open. That course is currently open right now. Uh, and I've gotten great feedback from it, but I've missed a little bit of the one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, so I've started doing a little bit of that, um, but I only do it virtually. So we do it, um, you know, like, via Skype or, or whatever, uh, video conferencing. And, uh, and I love it because it's, you know, it's, it's, I still can build relationships, but it's, it, it's an actual hard and fast one hour. You know, it's not like, like the other example I told you about. You make all tech tools easy to understand and you help your clients really begin utilizing them in their, their individual practices. And I love how you took it from, you know, your offline individual consulting into, you know, a group coaching platform that's outstanding and it's a great piece, you know, for those who are looking to figure out how to go about, you know, growing their consulting and, and having that concern of doing the, the increase in prices and so forth. Because I agree, it can be very difficult when you're working with, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one individual clients offline to actually make those changes in, uh, you know, your your rates and so forth in order to grow the business. So I love that you were mentioning 
how it is you kind of moved forward with the business. So I'm going to make sure to link the website from the show notes page um, so that the listeners can have a chance to check that out. And we can also put in a link to Bert Nerds as well. So any of the audience who is interested in help with Twitter um, can go ahead and get linked up to there. Uh, definitely, definitely. So if you had a time machine and could go back, say, 10, 15 years and tell yourself one thing, what do you think it would be? Um, 10, 15 years. Uh, it would be 10 to 15 years. It would be to buy Apple stock. <laughs> I love it. I was to say, where was I? Yeah, it would definitely be to buy Apple stock. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, where was I? Okay, yeah, it was like that was right around the time. Um at least, yeah, 15 years ago was 2000, yeah. Y2K, yep. Got it, got it. Yeah, that, that is the best advice ever. Thank you, Jen. Buy Apple stock. If we had that time machine, that's exactly what we would be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The show is really designed to help entrepreneurs come up with ideas all in a new industry. Um, so, Jen, we'd absolutely love to help you. If you had a magic wand and could change anything at all in your business, what would it be and why? Um, anything in my business. Um, if I could change anything in my business, it would really be, I mean, there's so many things I want to do, but in terms of just changing, uh, I just made such a huge change that has been so great by adding um, this full-time virtual assistant so I would say um, I would I would just like to have one more assistant um, to do some of the other tasks that this assistant is not helping me with because that would free me up to create even more content and then pursue some other things that um that I I really would wanted to explore in 2016 like uh, doing some live workshops um, and, uh, and maybe a, a retreat or an event. Uh, and also starting a podcast. So I can't really do that until I get more help. Right, right. Brother, I understand. You're looking to grow the team. I totally understand. Yeah. So hopefully we can uh, see if anybody in the techie community is, you know, a virtual assistant who's looking to hopefully hook up with you and, and link up and, and let them know that let you know that they are uh, ready and available. So hopefully we can help you with that. But um, Jen, let us know the best way our listeners can find you. You know, I think what your listeners would really enjoy is um, I have a fantastic online community. I call it my free online classroom, and it's it's called the Front Row. And um, and it's basically a, a place where like-minded entrepreneurs get together. It's not it's not all marketers. It's people. It's coaches and um, well, all sorts of people in all sorts of different industries who who uh, come together and share ideas and support each other. And um, I'll give you the the link to that. So if you want to put it in the sh uh, in the show notes, but um, that's the best place to find me because I pop in there um, all day long answering tech questions and. Um, and uh, getting, you know, some really juicy conversations going. Outstanding. We will definitely put that link on the show notes page. Uh, Jennifer, you've been absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you. It was just really so much fun to be here and chat with you, Lori. Jen, I had an absolute blast. Thank you once again for sharing your time and expertise with the audience and techie community. Thank you guys for tuning in once again for episode number 57. If you can't find an opportunity... Get out there and create one. There's nothing, absolutely nothing stopping you but you. And don't forget to reach out to Jen Leonard at jenleonard.com or you can always reach her through our show notes page at technology-equality.com forward slash Jen Leonard. Don't forget to reach out and also let us know what you think of the new show notes page. That's technology-equality.com. We look forward to hearing some feedback from you. And don't forget to click that subscribe button over on iTunes so that you don't miss an episode. And until our next episode, when we continue to hear the journey, find the pain and create solutions, enjoy the week.